Hello everyone, this is Deb McBride and welcome to my astrology podcast. Today is Monday, July 15th, 2019 and I am in beautiful Costa Rica where the birds are singing and actually the sun is out. So let's begin. We have a big week ahead. Tomorrow is the lunar eclipse and this is the last eclipse in this section of the year in July, where we had the solar eclipse two weeks ago on the second, and we are having the lunar eclipse tomorrow. And it is at 538 p.m. in Eastern Standard Time. Now this is important because when eclipses occur, there is always a place where they settle with the nodes. So the sun and the moon are near the nodes, And they are, this time, the sun is with the north node, the moon is with the south node. Two weeks ago when we had the eclipse, we had a a solar eclipse, this is a lunar eclipse, and the solar eclipse was at the north node. So both sun and moon conjunct at the north node. That's always about a new beginning, a lot of energy flowing through in the direction of fulfillment and where we're supposed to go. This eclipse is about the moon at the south node so emotionally we're cleaning we're cleansing we're releasing we're clearing away old patterns and this is an important thing to note because not only is the moon at the south node but saturn and pluto have been at the south node in capricorn now if you've been watching any of my video on youtube on my youtube channel i've been explaining this and discussing how the eclipses are playing into this Saturn-Pluto at the South Node. Now, what's really important, even though this is a partial eclipse and the one two weeks ago was a total eclipse, this is important because Saturn has been working with us all along to help us transform our old patterns that reside at the South Node. And... Because this is a cleansing eclipse and a a releasing eclipse, a lot of these old patterns we're going to watch sort of pass in front of us like a movie, and we're going to feel like we are clearing out, releasing a lot of the same things we've been releasing as Saturn has been bouncing back and forth on the south node for the last few months, and we'll finish with the south node in September. Now, hopefully, you will be able to take this energy, we'll all be able to take this energy and go, huh, okay, I see how far I've come in these last weeks and months. This has been a really good experience of release of old patterns, of old limitations. Saturn is where we're limited and we have to break through the limitation. And it's very important for us to pay attention to that because Saturn is always giving us a lesson to learn. And Saturn is where we need to not only learn, but also work through. And then, as I always say, Saturn is the wall before we get to the outer planets. So Saturn is the last visible planet with the naked eye before we start getting into Uranus and Neptune and Pluto and, and their transcendent qualities and where we have to transform and transcend and rise above and, and, uh, tr- get past our limitations and get past our fears and anxieties, which Saturn is always showing us. So in this case, we're, we've got a lot of work to do because Saturn has been, you know, forcing us all along to say, oh, I'm done. And there's a lot of I'm done vibe in the air. And in these last months, there's a lot of this experience of I have had it. I'm not doing that anymore. This no longer serves me. And where we can own our patterns and where we have been working through them rather unconsciously because that's what happens a lot with the south node we're we're a bit unconscious and and we are not giving those patterns any more energy and perhaps the best thing to say is that we're we're really taking our control and taking our power back because this is this is pluto's job to help give us a powerful experience of our our uh, transcendence of limitations. And so Saturn and Pluto are going to be working with this eclipse, and that's very important because they are going to be on the Capricorn side of the eclipse where the actual lunation is happening in Capricorn. Because even though the sun is in Cancer and at the north node, it really is 
sort of blocking with the earth blocking the the earth blocks the sun's light on the moon and this is where the eclipse occurs but sun is in ca cancer and it's been in cancer as we know all month and this is important uh as we process what is an old pattern and we start to transform things now saturn and pluto i've been talking about all year and how we're using them to transform and how we're using them to rise above and how we're using them to change things in our life. But what's important tomorrow and emotionally important is that the moon is doing its little occultation dance. Now, if you've been following me for a little while, you know that I've been speaking that every month the moon hits this Capricorn place in the zodiac and it goes to Saturn and it goes to Pluto and the occultation occurs where the lights of Saturn and Pluto blink out as the moon touches them. And tomorrow is no exception. So this is very interesting because the moon is going through to hit Saturn first at 3.18 a.m. Eastern Time. And it's going to block Saturn's light. And then about 10 hours later at 1.16 p.m. Eastern Time, the moon occults Pluto, which is you know, another occultation before the moon itself gets occulted from the shadow, from the eclipse. So complicated, right? Okay, let's explain. As you may or may not have heard on my past podcasts or on the video I made on YouTube, the moon comes along, touches Saturn, and this is not always the case. It just happens to be the case this year for long astrological explanations, which we won't get into. But the moon comes along and touches Saturn once a month in the sign of Capricorn. When it does this, it gives us a blink out of Saturn's energy. And then it gives us a blink out of Pluto's energy. And what happens when we're dealing with this is that they are no longer available to us for those moments. Doesn't mean forever, just means in that moment. Now, Saturn and Pluto, even though they are sticklers and intense and forcing us to get empowered, their lights go out, which means they're not available to us. And if they're not available to us, we're going to feel like, where did my transformation go? Wait, I was making progress. What happened? In those moments, it's time to step back and kind of look at what you have accomplished, what you've achieved, and don't be self-critical about not being able to keep moving things forward. It's only because you're not getting the Saturn-Pluto energy for that moment. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You're still moving. We're all still moving forward. We all have to keep moving energy. It's very important. But remember this. Once this eclipse is over, boom, then we're back on track again. And we're being reminded of where we're transforming. We're being reminded of how much work there is to still do. We're being reminded of, you know, how far we've come and where we've been in these months. And I bet if you stop and listen to yourself tomorrow and sort of take time for this, and I know it, these, you know, these things happen during either sleep time in certain portions of the world or work time in other portions of the world. It's a Tuesday, you know, so we, we see, Sit with ourselves, if we can, for some moments and try to, you know, meditate on how far we've come in these months. It's very important to see this because otherwise you're going to go, oh, Saturn and Pluto, where, you know, I, I've lost their energy. I've lost the plot. I've lost my thread. Where am I? It's okay. Eclipse. This is, this is eclipse energy. So in some respects, Saturn and Pluto are getting eclipsed. And then the moon is getting eclipsed. So the planet that's doing the eclipsing is then getting eclipsed later in the day. Complicated, right? Sounds it. Not as, not as much as you might think. Take notes. Pay attention. Meditate. Listen to yourself. Watch the events unfold. And don't ever give your power away during this whole thing. Eclipses are intense and we feel them very deeply. But it's not about staying in that energy. It's moving it. And, and just keep moving, just keep moving. Once the eclipse happens at 5.38 p.m. Eastern Time, the moon will go void, and then that's it. So we can all have a rest in the evening on the, on the Northern Hemisphere and the East Coast. You can all have a rest, and the rest of the day, the moon is void. 
We're not going to get much more accomplished. A great time for healing, a great time for meditating, a great time for reviewing, because we're in Mercury retrograde, remember, reviewing everything that's happened to us in these months and in these last two weeks, especially. So where does it put you? Where does it wind up? What do you need to change? What do you need to further address and work on? Very important. And so what's happened then is that we've got this chunk of time for about 12 hours because the next morning on Wednesday, the 17th, the moon moves into Aquarius and we are no longer in the void. And so because of that, we move into a fresh day with Aquarius, and we are on our way to new and bright things. Now, what else is happening during this time is that the sun, of course, has been in Cancer, but it opposed Saturn last week. And if you remember that, we talked about that on last podcast. Last Tuesday, the 9th, it opposed Saturn. And that's like, okay, what? <laughs> that was so that was a little bit of tough energy. That was a work through. And then it opposed Pluto yesterday, the 14th. So remember what I said, this was last week, we move from Saturn, we then move to Pluto. Saturn is where we're limited, limit, limitations are shown to us. We see the limitations, we acknowledge them, we feel stuck, we sometimes feel stuck. But we have to remember it's just Saturn. And I have to admit, there were some days last week that were I felt very strongly, I felt those limitations, I felt those fences around us, I felt that it was hard to break through. And then we move we navigated that sun to try Neptune Thursday, which was some grace. And then we move into Pluto, the sun opposing Pluto yesterday. And that was really important because it then allowed the transformation to occur. So we had some epiphanies. We had some transformations. We had Mars squaring Uranus last Thursday as well. So this was last Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were um, intense days and they forced us through the pattern, forced us to move the energy, forced us to get out of our skin and to just keep uh, transcending what felt like limitations for us. You should have probably felt better by Friday when the moon went into Sag, it's ruled by Jupiter, and then things got a little lighter for the weekend. But the sun has made its opposition to Pluto. And while the sun is still sort of opposing Pluto during this eclipse, we are going to, you know, the, the peak of that is over. So we're going to experience Venus also, because Venus is in the sign of Cancer. It has been close to where the sun is. It's following the sun's path. So Venus is going to be at the north node. Very nice during this eclipse. So that helps things. It helps us stay focused on fulfillment. It helps us stay focused on connection, relationships, um, what's important. But on Wednesday, Venus is opposing Saturn. So Venus is going to take the path that the sun just took. First oppose Saturn, then oppose Pluto, days at later. And so when Venus opposes Saturn, there's always this uh, relationships, people, money, stuff. Um, we have to think about where we feel limited in those areas, in our connections to people, in our relationships, in where we need to expand. And then remember the same energy last week. So if you feel a little stuck, don't worry, because what's happening is we're getting Venus um, moving to a beautiful trine with Neptune on the 18th Thursday in the afternoon, Eastern time. And we are really experiencing that um, Venus, Neptune, which is always very beautiful, very nice trine. And that's going to help things move along. Then from there on, Venus is going to move towards Pluto and oppose Pluto on the 21st Sunday, where this is going to give us a real sense of how we uh, transform and transcend everything that's happening during this eclipse and how we're transcending our relationships and transforming. Don't overindulge the Venus part. It's by the North Node. I think it's going to be easy to not do that. But remember, Venus Pluto is triangles and overindulgences with people and sometimes a little bit of too much Venus Pluto is it creates drama and creates a little bit of a soap opera. So we want to not indulge that energy and we want to keep moving um, our relationships, our friendships, our, our self-love forward. So that's, that's what's important. 
What's going to happen then on Friday the 19th before all this is Mercury is going to move backwards as it's been moving backwards into the sign of Cancer. And remember it was in Cancer last month and the last week of June it was very much at the very degrees it's going to visit again. So now it'll go back to 29 Cancer because remember it went into Leo, turned around last Sunday the 7th in Leo at 4 degrees and now it's moving, moving, moving forward. I mean, backward, it, backward, <laughs> forward through cancer, but back really backward um, in, in these last degrees. It's going to spend <clears throat> the rest of July in the sign of cancer with 29 degrees through 23 degrees. And then it's going to turn around on the 31st and go direct at 23 degrees of cancer. So we're thinking back to June. What happened in June around the 20th of June through the 26th of June. And what was going on then? Because if Mercury is going to visit those degrees again as it processes through the end of Cancer. Now remember, that's the first time was June. The second time is now when it moves back in the rest of this month through Cancer. And then it's going to turn around on the 31st of July and move through 23 to 29 again till August 11th, when finally on the 12th and it re-enters Leo and we'll sort of revisit what we've been through in the last days of June and the early days of July. So where does that leave you? What have you been doing? It's again another review, a process of experience of where we've been in these ecliptic weeks and where we've been at the end of June as we were getting revved up for the eclipses. And the 31st of July is a very potent day because not only does Mercury go direct at 11.58 p.m. Eastern Time, but shortly before that there will be a new moon at 11.12 p.m. Eastern Time at 8 degrees of Leo. Why is this important? Well, it's 45 minutes of each other, really. And... The sun and the moon have been in, will have will be in Leo, and when we have a new lunation, another new lunation after the eclipse period, this is the first lunation after the eclipses. It means the eclipse period is officially over, and it kicks out the energy of the eclipse. So whenever we have eclipses and Mercury retrograde happening simultaneously, this is really about watching, you know stepping back and watching from a vantage point what we've been through, what we've processed, how far we've come, all of these things, very important. But that 31st of July is going to show us a whole lot because even though it's like, oh yeah, we have a new moon every month. No, this is the second new moon in the month because on the second we had the eclipse and then this is the second new moon on the very end of the month and we're going to be releasing the eclipse period and releasing the Mercury retrograde. So all of this is going to be highly enlightening. So we've got some very interesting aspects coming up. Um, you know, when we have that 31st of July sort of release and kick out, uh, you know, stuff that we might have been grappling with through this whole time, it's going to all finish up and be over. And it's very complicated to, uh, you know, process this and watch it and pay attention to it when you're trying to live your life and your days and, and get things done. But I can guarantee you, if you pay attention, you're going to get, you're going to get some really good answers and some, maybe some surprises and some, hopefully some enlightening experiences. So this is really good. Um, lunar eclipses are, you know, since this is at the South node, it is, um, telling us to release more of the old stuff. So, you know, it's a little more emotional than the solar. So just just sort of be kind to yourself in this time. And I really I stress being kind to yourself because with Venus Saturn, we can be a little self-critical because it's happening at the same time with the emotional experience of tomorrow with all those occultations and then the lunar eclipse happening. Again, it's it's a little, you know, this is, we're, we're dealing with water and earth and sort of the ground soaking up all that water. We really want to be sure we're in a clear place as we release all this energy. Release, release. If something doesn't feel right, um, just move through it. Move, move with it. Honor it. Pay attention to it. Honor it. Honor yourself and your emotions. Very important. 
important to do on a daily basis. Very important to do right now. Venus is an emotional planet. It's in the sign of cancer. We're, we're really paying attention to our feelings right now. And, you know, whether you like to or not, they're going to be there. So what else is going on this week? Um, we have the moon now in Capricorn getting revved up for that eclipse. And it will, as I mentioned, be in Aquarius as of 519 a.m. on Wednesday, the 17th. And then it's going to go void at 11.53 a.m. on the 18th. So we don't get a lot of productive Aquarius moon time. We get a lot of void time because a very long void from 11.53 a.m. on the 18th to 5.19 p.m. on Friday the 19th. So for like a day and a half, we're going to have a void moon. Don't worry about it. Chill, relax, get, you know, it's summer for people in the Northern Hemisphere, get through and understand. And oh, you do a little analysis here because it's Aquarius moon of what happened during the eclipse for you. What was it about? What did it feel like? And for you going into that um, weekend, it's going to be a Pisces moon. So at 519 Eastern time on the 19th, we have a Pisces moon for the rest of the weekend until we get to uh, Monday the 22nd when it's void in the middle of the night for just a couple hours and then it goes into Aries. So we start fresh on the 22nd with an Aries moon and then later that night the sun goes into Leo. So all sorts of fire we're starting with next week, the beginning of next week, and we're going to start feeling very different. All this emotional stuff, all of this swimming watery stuff that we've been experiencing, it's going to lighten up a little bit. But this weekend coming, next weekend coming, is going to all be about water. <laughs> because remember, Mercury's going back into Cancer. The moon is going to be in Pisces all weekend. The sun is going to be getting ready to leave Cancer and really have that, um, you know, those last degrees of a sign are always like the most intense, the most potent of the energy of the sign. So I can expect a lot of feelings coming forward, a lot of emotions, a lot of sensitivity. Oh, just be aware of that. And again, be kind to yourself. Pay attention. Be connected to people. Very important. When we're in the sign of cancer, we do want to connect with people. It may not be your family. It may not have to be your family, but it is really much about your connection, connections in your life. And how important they are. Um, and then the sun and Mercury are going to meet up at the end of Cancer at that potent degree of 29 degrees on the 21st Sunday. <clears throat> so with that, we are going to really experience a very uh, strong uh, awareness of our, of our needs because Cancer is what we need to feel secure, to feel comfortable to feel uh, connected, so secure, comfortable, connected. That's what Cancerians like, a sense of home, a sense of comfort. So when that moon is in Pisces over the weekend, try not to, and you've got so much Cancer happening, try not to overindulge. Don't go into the spinning vortex of the south node in Saturn where where we want cake, <laughs> we want spaghetti, we want mashed potatoes. Cancerian energy is very comfort-oriented and comfort-food-oriented. So you can have a little bit, <laughs> but don't overindulge. Um, hopefully that Saturn on the south node will help us be aware of where we can overindulge and how we're not going to allow that to happen too much. And let's stay focused on moving the energy, the emotional energy, and connecting and grounding um, and freeing up our emotional selves of any limiting emotional patterns because we want to we really do transform this. And that's about it for the week. So um, be well aware of the eclipse. Stay with it. Pay attention to it. Acknowledge it. Embrace it. Embrace your feelings. Embrace your emotions relax into all the water. If you have an opportunity to go visit some water, if you're not in a frozen hemisphere and, and you can go visit some water, 
a swimming pool, a beach, a lake, a river. Go do it because this is sort of honoring the water energy right now and honoring your feelings and honoring your emotions. And yes, it's a complicated time, but we all have to figure out how to move forward and move through it. You know, there's Venus is in Cancer too, and this is, you know, be with people, connect with people, connect with loved ones, and how they enhance your life and make it better and make it good, and how you enhance their lives and make it better. Connect with people. Use the Cancerian energy right now. Don't get stuck in, you know, the self-criticism that Saturn can also give us at that south node in Capricorn. Why am I not moving faster? Why am I not getting through this more easily? It's not. Watch those occultations tomorrow. Fascinating energy. Watch how you feel. Watch. Remember, the moon is our tide, the tides of emotions all day. Watch how you feel. Just observe it. Try not to overindulge anything. Observe. Write it down. Keep some record of it so that when we have these kinds of aspects again, you know what to expect. And it's a good place to stop and watch where how far you've come in these last months. Okay, so in that respect, I bid you a lovely eclipse and a beautiful week. I'm Deb McBride. This is my astrology podcast. You can reach me for an astrology session, especially during these intense times. It's good to have an astrology session. Um, and my email is deb at debmcbride.com. And watch my videos on my YouTube channel, Deb McBride Astrology. You can see them, and I'm talking about the eclipses, I'm talking about Saturn Pluto, I'm talking about the South Node, very important, and also the occultations I talk about in those videos. So I invite you to look at them. My Twitter and Instagram handles are at Deb Astrology. And I will be back in a week to discuss how much more we're working with astrologically and where the best intentions go and where best to use your energy. And have a lovely week and thank you so much for listening.